Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send and browse the fantastic selection of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Again, go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode. We are delighted to have not one guest, but two guests today joining us on the show. Um, as always, I'm Roel and our co-host Francois, who is training somewhere. I don't know where he is, but he's here recording with us. How are you doing, Francois? I'm very good. Thank you, Roel. How are you? I'm great. Uh, I'm happy because we got two guests to jo- joining us today. It's David Coleman and David Westcott. How are you guys? And um, moving forward, we'll use their last names because their first names are both David. It'll just be easier. So Mr. Coleman, how are you? Uh, doing great. Um, thanks for having us on. I'm uh, actually recording this. I'm at Arrowhide's offices at the moment, and I'm here to do a couple of speaking events. And um, But I'm um, glad I was able to take the time out to talk to you fellas. Fantastic. And sorry I couldn't see you in person. Uh, today happens to be also Mobility Field Days, like uh, first dinner. So I'm also in between working and then the podcast recording and then going over to mobility field day right after this well hopefully we'll all see each other at wi-fi track in october oh for sure and how about you mr westcott how are you doing i'm doing great i'm delighted to be here i just uh flew in i'm in southern arizona right now and uh just checked into my hotel so i finally got to sit down and relax awesome everyone's traveling except for me that's great (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well, we brought you guys onto the show because obviously, uh, if you guys don't know, you guys are the writers of a very popular book, the CWNA Study Guide, and you guys are coming out with a brand new edition of the Study Guide. But before we actually talk about the Study Guide, because I feel everyone knows who you guys are as authors and as professionals. What I really want to know is how did you guys get started in wireless? How did you make that move or migration transition into Wi-Fi? And maybe we'll start with you, Mr. Coleman. Um, Well, uh, I've actually had four or five different careers in my life. I'm kind of an old guy. Uh, Believe it or not, um, a year, many moons ago, I was actually in the music industry. Um, Uh And then I found my way into the circuit board industry and I worked for a circuit board manufacturer in Atlanta, Georgia. And the short story is, is that I got laid off. And this is about 1999, the year 2000. Um, While I was at the circuit board uh, manufacturer, I had uh, gotten into computers, uh, got into networking. I became the de facto network engineer for a manufacturing plant and found myself out of work. So I went to to a convention in Atlanta looking for a job. It was was an IT convention. And um, I came across a booth by this company called CWNP, Certified Wireless Network of Professionals. And they had a brand new certification out called CWNA. So I took their certification um, and it was all about wireless networks. I never heard about wireless networks before. It wasn't even called Wi-Fi at the time. It was just called wireless. And I learned about it and I started my own company and I started a consulting and training company called AirSpy that I, uh, and was self-employed for about 10 years. Um, and so I kind of got in there on the ground level uh, of Wi-Fi. And uh, currently, uh, for the last nine years, uh, I've been working here at, uh, for a wireless land vendor, uh, Aerohive Networks, where I'm the senior technical evangelist. So I kind of just fell into it um, and was intrigued by uh, a new technology and got in kind of early. Awesome. 
that's quite the path moving from music industry to a technical role. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how that happened, but I'm glad where I'm at right now. Now I'm curious. Uh, the question is, uh, how many acronyms did you remember after the first CWNA training you took? <laughs> Well, there's quite a few. I think in our book, there's about 600 acronyms. <laughs> How about you, Mr. Westcott? Well, I actually started out as an office automation administrator. I was doing white work processing uh, administration. And then I went and st joined a startup out in Washington State. RCA and Sharp had about $400 million to they were going to be doing uh, silicon wafer manufacturing. And I installed my first network. It was a 3Com Ether Series network and uh, 640K of RAM and 10 meg hard drives and my clients and my uh, servers. And then from there, uh, let's see, wound up working for Digital Equipment Corporation for a few years, doing PC stuff with them. Then I got my Novell certification. I was a master certified Novell instructor and engineer, Microsoft certified trainer and engineer, uh, Cisco CCNA for about nine years. Um, taught at Boston University for 10 years. BU had a kind of a career changing program. It really wasn't you know, the university as you might think, it was uh, corporate training. So if, uh, you know, if you were, I, as an example, we had a guy who was an automotive technician. He was uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini certified, and you would think that would be really profitable. Um, but he wanted to get out of the industry because you don't make a lot of money unless you own the shop. And his two predecessors both had back surgery because you're leaning over engines, torquing, uh, you know, nuts and bolts at, you know, 70, 80 pounds. So he wanted to change careers, and he actually wound up becoming a great networking person. And then... Um, Late 90s, early 2000s, IT industry kind of took a hit, training industry took a hit, and I was teaching at BU one week, and they were setting up for a class the following week, and the setup guys uh, said, hey, can you give us a hand? And I'm like, sure, what do you need? And you know, we're doing, I'm like, what class is this? I'm like, oh, some wireless class. Oh, <laughs> what's this wireless stuff? I knew nothing, barely knew how to spell the word wireless, and I happened to have the week off. And so uh, BU let me sit the class for free. And it was the second class that Devin never ran. And it was a blast. And I mean, just sitting in a class with Devin teaching is, an, is a whole experience. If you never had the chance to do so, um, you know, do so. Uh, he's, a, he's a character, he's a great guy. And uh, it just was exciting. And so uh, that was 2002. So I got my certification, got my CWNA cert, and started teaching that. Um, started hooking up with some vendors. I met Coleman uh, at the first uh, CWSP class that I ever ran. It was actually it was a beta class down in, I think that was in Tucker, Georgia, if I recall correctly. And uh, pretty much uh, been doing this uh, ever since. Awesome. I, I really like when people talk about how they've fallen into Wi-Fi like it wasn't something you purposely said I'm going to be in Wi-Fi you just happened to come across the technology somehow either through training or through uh, being put into a role where you got to manage wireless and then all of a sudden here you guys are both writers for the CWNA study guide or Cybex and I think that's just quite the story of the both of you right I mean how long have you guys both been writing together as a team? Um, well, that's kind of goes uh, back to the, what Westcott just said. We met at a uh, training class that I was the uh, one of the co-teachers of for a beta CWSP class, and he was a student and uh, also met other people um, uh, there that we've continued relationships with. But the, for some reason, Westcott and I became friends and stayed in touch and compared notes. And, um, and then I got approached by Cybex Publishing, which is a, a Wiley publisher, and uh, to write a competitive CWNA study guide. And I wanted to do it, and, um, but I didn't have time to do it myself. So I called up Westcott and said, hey, dude, are you in? And, um, and we've been writing together now for about 17 years. Wow, 17 years. I mean, there's also been quite a lot of changes in Wi-Fi within 17 years. So there's 
quite a lot to write about. <laughs> now, what, what would you say? actually? Actually, it wasn't quite 17. It was, what, 2005, I think, is when we uh, did our first one. Oh, okay. Well, it seems like se- <laughs> writing it with seems you like, it seems like 17 years. <laughs> you, you guys aren't even keeping right, count 14 anymore. 14 years. <laughs> okay. when, when, you publish, when you publish a thousand-page book, that alone feels like 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I will get into the process of writing a book, but that first edition that you guys wrote together – what did it feel like when you got to uh, the first thing is complete writing it? Like you, 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 you wrote that last word or that last sentence and you said, I'm done. What did that feel like? Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how long would that have taken you guys back? Do you, do you even remember how long it took to write the first edition? I think it was about a year. Um, I mean, most, most of the projects wind up being nine months to a year. And that first, that first one, um, I think we, we weren't as busy at the time. Um, I mean, I, I'm pretty much training. I'm pretty much billing out 45, 50 weeks a year. And I'm sure Coleman is, I mean, I know his schedule is crazy too. Uh, back then, I think we were, uh, I was teaching probably about two classes a month. Um, and so I did put a lot more effort into the writing. Um, and so, uh, you know, that was probably about a year, I think, because uh, we, uh, Coleman approached me in 2015, and uh, I, I won't say his exact words, but he asked me to become a co-author, uh, you know, the, the paraphrase is because I'm very meticulous, okay? It was, two th- it was 2005, actually, but... Um, uh, 2005, yeah, sorry. <laughs> But uh, yes, it was. Um, the word is, uh, it's a, it, meticulous is a good word. But um, so he's a really good editor and he likes to, um, so for whatever reason, our writing styles mesh and we're, we're very, very proud of that. Um, but to the question of how long does it take, it, it, it does t- consume a lot of our time. And one of the things, basically what happens uh, is we spend a lot of time working on the weekends on this book and a lot of time at night. And a lot of these chapters, quite frankly, have been written at night in hotel rooms or on airplanes. Mm-hmm. Or, or restaurants. I do a lot of writing in restaurants uh, after teaching for the day. I'll go out and hang out at a restaurant sometimes three, four, five hours if they're not busy, and then just sit there and you know drink some drink iced tea and uh, write. And what does that writing process look like? Because for me, I mean, when did blogging start? Uh, I mean, it, around the time you guys were writing that first edition, probably is when blogging really started taking off. How much different is it from writing a book versus blogging? Because blogging kind of seems like you're writing mini many chapters of a book. Yeah, um, I'll address that because I do a lot of blogging for uh, my company. And um, the difference is with blogging is you, the secret behind blogging is you want to keep it short and sweet and uh, something that somebody can read in just a couple of minutes. And um, uh, with this, you're writing entire chapters. Um, That being said, sometimes just write a couple of paragraphs, it might take you an hour. Um, and you might st- spend 15 minutes on one sentence sometimes due to research and, um, and just trying to word it. And, um, so the hardest part is always writing something from scratch. Uh, and we do have new material in the new edition that has been written from scratch, um, as well as a lot of editing yeah. to past chapters. But, um, uh, writing something from scratch the first time is the hardest part, um, and it can be extremely time consuming. Because yeah, I imagine, oh, yeah. uh, sorry, I, I just imagine A to 211B doesn't change. So you just bring that over from the previous editions. Right. But the first time through, I, I cannot tell you how much I have referenced the standards and, and the standards and the amendments. I, I remember writing, oh, I, I forget whether it was the 802, when 802.11n came out or the 802.11ac. I forget which it was, but if 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 you know anything about the 802.11 standards, um, the standard document comes out, and then they'll come out with an amendment. And the way the amendment works is the amendment is basically a document that tells you what gets added and what gets deleted from the original. 
And so the amendment will say, you know, delete paragraph 3.1.1.5 uh, and add this instead. And I remember writing, like I said, either 802.11n or 802.11ac, and I literally had a printout of the 802.11n, I'm sorry, 802.11 standard in front of me and the amendment, and I'm crossing out and writing in the changes and edits because I'm trying to you know, write the differences, mm -hmm. and this document has one thing, that document has the other thing, and you got to figure out what's still current, what's not current. So it's a lot, a lot of research. Uh, like you said, 8.11b hasn't changed, but as new stuff comes out, I mean, I remember writing the crypto stuff uh, for the original uh, 80211, I'm sorry, uh, CWNA book and then CWSP book. And I read like three cryptography books mm. just to get myself up to speed to write the crypto chapters. And that being said, just to follow up on that, um, you know, we do use the IEEE standard and uh, documentation uh, for research and for a lot of references and fact checking. But I do want to emphasize um, we're not just regurgitating uh, IEEE standards. Uh, one thing I learned from Matthew Gast a long time ago is that the standards are merely guidelines. So what I'm, where I'm going with this is that one of the things that Westcott and I both pride ourselves about the, the books that we write together is we try to make them as real world as possible. So yeah, there will be a lot of things and a lot of references in terms of the IEEE standards and the Wi-Fi uh, Alliance certifications, but we try to add some, um, in a lot of the chapters, add a lot of real world touches to this based on our experiences right. in dealing with Wi-Fi over the years. I think that's where your guys' Cybex books stand out a lot. And I've, I've, I've read them alongside with the other, the, uh, the CWMP guys as well, because I use them both in tandem. Uh, I don't use one or the other solely. I use them together. And I find that the, your, your Cybex books offer quite a lot of real world knowledge there because like, like how you introduced you both of yourselves earlier and how you described your experience over the years, this all comes together in your books. And I think even when you add a little bit extra, right, it's not just information to pass the exam. You're also providing, hey, this is what you're going to run into when you get out there in the real world. The exam is one thing, but here's a book that'll give you knowledge when you actually get out there and do it. Yeah, and that's, and that's a big go ahead, comment. Okay, I'll, I'll be real quick and please follow up, uh, Wes Scott, is that one, another thing we're very proud of and the thing that we have found out over the years is that, yes, the primary goal is that this is a, a book for a certification exam, but in reality, we find that probably about 70, 75% of the book sales are actually people that are buying it more as a reference guide um, for their job or having to deal um, uh, with Wi-Fi, uh, wherever they're having to deal with it and usually involving their, their job or their career. So we're very proud of that, that um, it is used as, as a reference guide uh, about Wi-Fi technology and not just as a study guide. Yeah, one of the things, I mean, uh, I mean, Coleman and I over the years, um, I mean, he's a great co-author. We work really well together and we, we always try to do the right thing. We always try to add value. Um, you know, our, our goal, I mean, it is a study guide. Absolutely. But our goal is, you know, my opinion, if you, you do it right or you don't do it. And our goal is to make the best damn wireless book we can and bring a lot of our experience in. Um, a lot of, you know, just our knowledge uh, and real world stuff. Uh, we, we leave a lot of the older stuff in too, because I'm, I'm a huge believer of history, uh, looking at the past. Uh, we start off the book, one of the things, um, you know, I remember when I first started out with uh, computers, uh, just understanding how does a bit get transmitted across a cable? You know, you alternate a current. Okay, great, this current gets alternated, but but how does that actually represent the bit? And like, okay, well, you do a different amplitude and one amplitude's a one and the other amplitude's a zero. It's like, oh, okay, now that makes sense. But nobody ever told me that. Mm -hmm. So one of the first chapters um, you know, that we, I wrote uh, in the early days, I said, listen, we need a chapter on you know, communications fundamentals. 
And it was a great course, Novell's Networking Technologies course. I used to love teaching that. And I, that's where I learned a lot of my communications fundamentals. And so, you know, I told Coleman I wanted to put in the book. And that's one of the things I think that, that we do well together is, you know, I'll come to him and say, hey, listen, I want to put this in the book. And I mean, we'll hash it out a little bit. Um, but, you know, usually if one of us has a passion for something going in the book, um, usually it winds up in the book. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll have disagreements, but we, we do collaborate really well on, on what and why things go in the book. And, uh, you know, so that, that works out nice. Okay. So it's not just an arm wrestling match then about what gets put in. <laughs> no, no. It, I mean, it, it really isn't. I mean, I, like I said, you know, that the networking and fundamental stuff, I, I said in the early days, you know, this is an area that people don't understand. We need to put it in and then they can understand what this wireless stuff is about more. And that's been what chapter two in the book, I think since the beginning, something like that. So on, on that note, like how do you guys, let's say for the CWNA guide, how do you guys decide which topic to cover? And most importantly, how do you decide how deep you cover the topics? <laughs> Well, we have to start off, uh, first of all, um, and make sure that we cover all of the ex CWNA exam objectives. Um, so we start off with that, and that is kind of a, and, um, the beginning. Then we create a book outline. Um, and then now our outline, uh, and then we try to put it into like 18 to 20 chapters. And one of the things we've done differently this time is we've rearranged the chapters in what we think is a more logical order. Okay. That being said, the outline does not match the exam objectives in terms of order or significance. We still have to cover all those topics, but we, um, we basically try to put the outline of the book in the same way that we we teach when we, when Westcott's teaching a class or where I'm teaching a class about the technology, we try to write a lot like the way we teach. And, uh, and then from there we just, we start attacking uh, one chapter each and then we start swapping chapters and editing each other's work and adding stuff in. And then it gets passed along to about, I don't know, Westcott, what is it about four different editors? So uh, yeah, four or five. Yeah, during the whole process, uh, we have to look at every single chapter, uh, each one of us about five or six times and five or six um, uh, different edits and about four or five sets of eyes look, look at each chapter. And, and still every now and then we, we still end up with a misspelled word. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> But it's not, it's not that often. Um, I I have to give a lot of credit to the Cybex people. Um, they are amazing. The process is outstanding. Um, I you know I think you know I have a good co-author. I think we work well together, so that helps definitely. But um, the quality of the editors that we've gotten, uh, the editors, the layout people, uh, all the rest of the you know the people, uh, the indexers and stuff like that. Um, they really have helped the process and and we've done what eight books now together so we kind of know the process pretty cold um, I did my own book last year I, I did a book on my own a vendor book and I pretty much took the same process uh, because the process works and uh, I think you know the quality came out in that also I mean, you know and that's that's what we think it's a, a lot of it's about typos gonna happen but it's not that many uh, we do a pretty good job to give, you know, give, uh, you know, you, you're giving us your money for this book and we want to give you something that's of value to you. Yeah, and, and, and that's true. We definitely, I want to uh, just confirm what Westcott just said. Uh, having professional editors uh, while working with us uh, is a tremendous help and we understand their processes, but I, I want to take it a step further too. And, and give uh, hats off to some of the technical editors that we've had in the past. Uh, in the past, we've had guys like uh, Andrew Von Nagy uh, and Marcus Burton, uh, who works for Ruckus, um, uh, doing technical editing for us. And this time uh, around, we've had uh, Ben Wilson, uh, who is uh, works for Fortinet, uh, who is our technical editor. And having a, somebody that can also just make sure that what you're saying and just put in an extra two cents from a different perspective than from what Westcott and I have is always helpful. Yeah, that's wonderful.
Our show is brought to you by Audible. Did you know you can ask Alexa to read a book to you? I have an Alexa dot in my house, and I had my favorite book being read to me, Ready Player One. It was really awesome because audio makes great audiobooks, whether you like to listen to books to get your mind somewhere else or whether you like to learn. Sometimes I like to read biographies. I've been an Audible listener for over a year, and I absolutely love it for my commute. You will too, because the selection on Audible is phenomenal. It seems like every book that comes out in print is also in Audible. So for you guys, you can go to audibletrial.com slash clear to send, and you can get a book for free right now. Download it and start listening within a few seconds. So again, that's a free book for you guys. Download it at audibletrial.com slash clear to send. Well, what, what don't we go into the differences with this edition versus the previous ones? You did mention it's a complete overhaul of the book, logical chapter orders based on like how you would train. What else is, is new in this book? I'm going to let Coleman take this. He, uh, he did a lot of the layout uh, redesign of this book. Uh, so I'm going to let him have the honors on this one. Um, so the first thing we addressed is we just rearranged a lot of the chapters. Um, uh, we I took a look at it and I said, you know, these chapters are, are just in an order that because we would just add a new chapter and a new topic with each edition. But on the fifth edition, let's say, let's teach this in a more logical order. So some of it was just moving one chapter forward or, or backwards. Um, and uh, of course, every chapter gets uh, a hard look and a re-edit on each edition. But um, and then we also removed a bunch of stuff uh, for the first time. In the past, we left everything in, but this time we removed a bunch of stuff. There's still a lot of stuff in there for a, a historical viewpoint, but we got rid of some stuff that simply isn't relevant anymore and, and in the real world. And then finally, the new stuff, uh, there is a, even though it's not testable yet, there's a brand new chapter on 802.11ax. Um, we're extremely proud of a brand new chapter on wireless land design concepts. Um, it's like 90 pages, uh, a completely updated chapter on wireless land troubleshooting. We basically rewrote, ent uh, entirely, um, the chapters on site surveying and a lot of overhaul on both the chapters about medium access and the chapter on the 802.11 Mac and frames um, made that just a, a, a lot better. Um, and uh, so it's, in my mind, of all the additions that we've done, this has probably been the biggest overhaul since the original book. Yeah, one of the things, uh, one of the things also we did um, is like over the years, you know, the original book was 8 or 11, uh, you know, A and B and you know, G at that time. And then when we added N, that wound up becoming a chapter. And then when we added AC, that became a chapter. And at that time, I think it, it justified being a chapter. Uh, but then when we got to this latest edition, it's kind of like, okay, you know, N and AC are so much alike. Uh, there are two MIMO technologies, you know, and I mean, it's definitely differences. So that's where what Coleman was saying, where we changed the Mac and, you know, some of the other chapters where we no longer had an N chapter. We no longer had an AC chapter. We had a media access control chapter. We have a MIMO chapter. Um, so we, we kind of, you know, broke it out that way a little bit, a little bit more logical, you know, in the fourth edition, third edition, uh, and we do this with every book, but this was kind of a, a point where the culmination, we kind of had to say, okay, you know, we, we've done it in this book in the past, but now we've got to the point where we really have to do some redesign of this. Yeah, because I'm looking at the chat. So if you guys don't know, you can purchase this already on on uh, Amazon. Uh, I mean, it doesn't the paper version doesn't come out yet until, like you, uh, we were talking about this before we recorded. Mm -hmm. Right now it's saying September 25th, but you can browse what the chapters look like. And I'm really liking the layout of the chapters. I think it does make a lot of sense. And like you just talked about the MIMO chapter where you talk about it in terms of high throughput and very high throughput, I think that's, that's, a, good, that's a good layout. I think it makes sense that in terms of how you learn the concepts of um, 
what you're going to be tested on and how Wi-Fi works. I think that's a, that's a good idea. Thanks. Now, the one thing we'd I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one thing that I did know, and was this done on purpose, is it's 1,024 pages long. <laughs> We couldn't have tr- we could have done that if we tried. <laughs> it's almost because as I've... long as the standards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that, that's a really good point. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot likely... of the, a lot of those pages include just the indexes and and, and things like that. Yeah, I think the, the actual meat well. of the book is maybe about eight hundred and fifty pages. Um, and you also got to remember, there's also like practice test questions uh, in with each chapter and the answer so that eats up some some pages but um in terms of the actual chapter content i am not exactly sure i i'm guessing about 850 pages when you think so westcott yeah it's probably probably a pretty good estimate i mean when we write it we write it in word and so we have kind of no idea what that's going to translate because you know we write it in word then the layout people and then they add the graphics and then they bring it to pdf and so you know whatever that final number is uh we both thought it was going to be somewhere in the 900s um we took a lot out and like when we saw it was over a thousand, we were like, oh my gosh. But you know, that's some of those some of those new chapters. And we we did take a lot out. Um, but uh some of those new chapters we just went uh went a little wild on in a good way. Uh, you know, AX and uh you know network design and troubleshooting are pretty important chapters and you know, we don't hold back, we just go for it. Yeah, I will say do you have to give a lot of credit to the editors because they do have to read the whole thing, right? So Coleman, like when you when you guys were submitting this, did any of the editors say, Oh my god, guys, this is this is a ton of pages. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and honestly, you know, Westcott said, like, we try to write the best wireless book and we, we take great pride in our, our writing. Um, and we, we do love our editors, but they don't love us <laughs> um, <laughs> because for one thing, we're ne- we never make a deadline um, on time. <laughs> um, a, a lot of other technical writers, that's all they, they do. And so Cybex isn't used to, I mean, they've gotten used to us, but they've gotten used to us not delivering um, um, uh, the final product in the timeline that they're looking for. So um, sometimes they get a little frustrated with us. <laughs> so practically speaking, how do you guys share the, the content you write? Is it like on a Google form? Is it like Word documents you guys send via email? Do you have like a Dropbox account? Or um, does Cybex have like a web portal where you can upload your work? How does it work? Um, Cybex has a uh, FTP server. And we either upload the files and the graphics to folders on the FTP server, or we'll just email it between each other, depending upon the size of the files. Um, I mean, it's, you know, we don't use any super fancy sharing technology or anything like that. Um, you know, we've been doing this uh, since 2005 this way, it works. And so, um, you know, it's kind of old school, but it does the job. and. Uh, the word. Well, uh, it, we do use yeah. a Microsoft Word document, and there is a, a Cybex template uh, that has yep. their style sheets in it. So that helps us with some of the styling, um, okay. and um, and the way that, and the, and the proper formatting using their template. Um, uh, additionally, when Westcott and I create the figures and the graphics, we usually build something first on a PowerPoint and uh, create it, and then we submit it to Cybex, and then they have their own illustrators that then take um, the, the graphic that we've uh, crudely drawn, and then they um, create a, a better uh, looking illustration. Right, and there's there's very strict rules on. I mean, what, the reason why they'll rechange it because they have certain font formats for certain font sizes, certain formats and layouts for graphics even. So, I mean, I could give them a perfectly designed graphic, and they're going to still redo it because my graphic did not match the the proper font for the book. Interesting. Now, this is for Coleman. I assume you had the 802.11 AX chapter. Is that right? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, w- I did the first go around, but uh, Wes, I mean, we are co-authors, <laughs> um, but uh, I was the, I, I created the original content on that chapter to begin with. I mean, the reason why I, I mentioned that is because Aerohive um, has got their AX AP yeah, well, yeah and, and that's true, and it is an exciting technology. Uh, obviously, um, it is a vendor-neutral new, book. Is, I do yeah. want to stress that. And so this thinking, is not an advertisement for Aerohive APs yeah. by any means. But, um, but uh, and, you will see, maybe, and you will see other vendors um, coming out with uh, AP, AXAPs. Um, we, um, I've been doing, personally, at, within my job, a lot of research on the technology, okay. and um, it holds a lot of potential especially with OFDMA. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just waiting right now. We're just waiting for the clients to appear. Yeah. yeah, I was assuming you had a chance to even lab something up that would contribute to the content that you wrote uh, in terms of educating people on how 11AX works. Because I think including AX is is important because it's, it's coming. We're just waiting for clients and, and full ratification to, all of that is going to come right at us soon. Yeah, and there was also our, our, our way of um, because we we you know the CWP program uh, redoes their certification every two to three years, and that's about the same uh, time frame that we rewrite the book, every, uh, new edition every two three three years. So we besides trying to make it real world and making uh, passing for an exam, we wanted to future proof it a little bit. So yeah. we that's why we included an AX chapter. That's even though it's not testable yet, um, there's already AX. EPs out by several vendors, including Arrowhive, and um, the um, will the technology will be prevalent starting next year, and will be testable subject in the future too. Now, I'm sure from experience, um, we'll find that in the next edition, we'll be making some probably some pretty serious edits to that chapter because <laughs> um, uh, what we've always found is um, with every technology until it's field tested, you, you sometimes just don't know. And um, so, um, you know, I have had some hands on personally with some AX technology, but uh, we haven't field tested it yet. So um, things could change. And but I think it's going to change for the better. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, Francois, you have anything else to add before we get to, to near the end of the episode? Um, <clears throat> I had something to add, but that's actually not a question. It's more like a comment. Um, something they might not know, but um, in coming from someone that doesn't have English as a, you know, a native language, uh, when someone outside of, I guess, the English-speaking countries read your book, uh, they always need to keep like a dictionary handy to to understand the English and understand the technical content. So um, I was just that I was just just wanted to let you guys know, uh, so you're aware that you also. Uh, on, on top of improving people's Wi-Fi knowledge, you're also improving in probably uh, uh, in, uh, English levels for a lot of people internationally. And uh, also keep that in mind the next time you, you write the book, maybe you can add some more words and people can learn a little bit more English. Well, it's, it, it's interesting that you say that because um, one of the things um, I had said to Coleman, uh, I think with our first book, is you know we we kind of realized that this would be purchased from people around the world and we do not allow contractions in our book we talk with contractions we send notes back and forth to each other but don't can't won't isn't any contractions they always get removed from our book a few can slip in every now and then and our, our editors, sometimes we actually have to send them when we, you know, it's interesting because when, you know, we're on the fifth edition. So we basically send a, uh, a letter to the editor basically saying, folks, this is our fifth edition and this is the way you are going to edit our book. And we have certain things that we have that we do and contractions is one of them. Um, we also, many of the uh, technical books out there, once they define a word and then put the acronym, they use the acronym from that point on. And that's another thing that we don't do. 
uh, we will use, I will use the word access point at times instead of AP, even though everybody knows it's an AP. Um, you know, we, we tend to, if we haven't used the word in, in a while, we're going to use those words instead of the acronym to reinforce because I, as a technical reader myself, I hate where I'm like reading something and then like four pages later, I see this acronym and I don't know the acronym. So I have to flip back four pages if we remember what that acronym is. Yeah. And then six pages later, again. And uh, so, so that's another thing that we try to do. We try to realize um, we both have trained around the world. I think we've both been to six continents and all over the place. Uh, and we understand that, uh, you know, it's not just English speaking people. Yeah. So, um, and that's, and that's true. And, uh, I'm, you know, I wish our book could get translated into, uh, uh, more languages. Maybe it will be one day. Um, other, and, other than Chinese. Yeah. And the third edition was translated into uh, a simplified version of, of Mandarin, but, um, uh, at, at the moment it's, uh, it's just strictly English, but we do try, we do do our best to try to make it as easy to understand for even people that were, um, English is their first language. Cool. I mean, now that you guys have completed this book and it's it's gonna be out soon, what is next? What are you guys working on now? Are you already starting on the sixth edition? Hell no. <laughs> I, I I I'm starting on another book. Um, Last year, I wrote a uh, Understanding Aruba OS 6 book, and I'm working on Understanding Aruba OS 8 book, mm. which I hope to have out within uh, 12 months. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we'll look out for that. Uh, I know Cybex books planned at the moment or uh, third-party books. Um, I've done some uh, – I do a lot of writing projects for Arrowhive, so I wrote an AX for Dummies uh, book for Arrowhive, which also happens to be the same publisher. Um, I'll probably um, be involved with some other writing projects with Arrowhive um, uh, about things I can't talk about yet. And, uh, and I also do weekly blogging uh, as well. Um, but I would imagine, uh, and you of course, you know, what Scott and I also have a security book. I don't think we'll be rewriting that for at least for another three or four years. But um, I would imagine... Um, I, I hate, can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I'm guessing in about three years, we'll probably start the sixth edition. <laughs> so it's about every three years. So security will probably be doing that again in two years because they'll probably change the exam. And in three years, they'll change the CWNA exam. So we pretty much track the exams is what yeah. we wind up doing. Um, you know, to what extent we have to do the edits, depending upon uh, how much has changed at that time. But um, you know, one of the things I was going to also mention is, uh, I mean, we learn a ton from doing this ourselves. And it's interesting just going from one edition to the next. I, I go back and I, I remember my, I wrote the definition for AAA. Uh, I forget whether it was the original CWNA book or the first CWSP book. And I went back and looked at that. And the definition that I had for AAA sucked. <laughs> it was bad <laughs> because nobody was, I mean, you know, the authentication part, people understood, um, accounting part, people understood, but people really weren't doing authorization back in 2006. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a couple vendors, but not many. And so one of the things that we have learned in writing the books is uh, we'll write a book and we'll go back and like, Oh man, I was just wrong on that, <laughs> or, or that that was just bad. So I mean, it's it's just part of the learning process. Um, so it's kind of fun for us to do that too. Uh, and you know, every book is is a learning process for us. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, we thank you guys for writing this book. And again, that's the Cybex CWNA Study Guide Fifth Edition. We'll have a link in the show notes where you can pre-order that on Amazon. Uh, you got the Kindle version, paperback. Probably going to be a PDF version, I assume, or maybe who knows. But um, or or you could win one, or you could win <laughs> one. Good segue. So the two I thought you, so. <laughs> the two of you have something special for our listeners. Where uh, if you head over to the show notes, there's a form you can fill out, and I'll let you guys, uh, Mr. Coleman, Mr. Westcott, what do you guys have for the listeners? 
So we're going to give away uh, two um, paperbacks, um, one from me and one from Westcott. The one that has my autograph on it is much more valuable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell people all the time when they ask me to autograph it, I said, listen, you do realize when I autograph it, it's going to devalue the book. So you really want me to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do the same thing. You know, it's actually embarrassing when people ask us our, for our autograph, but uh, it's, it's also very humbling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a... You just put a lot of work into it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll definitely be looking for your signature at the CWNP conference when I see you. Well, well guys, I just want to thank both of you for having us on. We've uh, enjoyed it, and I hope your listeners have too. And uh, I'll just, I'll finish... Uh, one more thing saying that I want to thank everybody. Westcott and I would both like to thank everybody that has um, bought our book, um, books in the past. As a matter of fact, we actually, in this go around, we dedicated uh, the forward, uh, the dedication of the book is to our readers. Um, and so I, I'm not going to read the dedication. I'll wait for you to buy the book. <laughs> but um, uh, the last edition, I think, sold about 16,000, 17,000 copies. And hopefully in the next edition, we'll sell about 30,000 copies. But uh, thank you for everyone that has bought the book and, uh, and has read the book. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you, guys. I appreciate it, too. Um, you know, we've, we've put a lot of effort into it. And we do that uh, because of the, the feedback we get from people. Um, you know, we really like the fact that people are benefiting from it. Uh, we get a lot from it ourselves, but uh, we, you know, we do appreciate it. And we, we feel honored to do this. We feel very humbled to do it. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's very strange uh, to say that we wrote the book. And it's just, uh, we just kind of fell into it. Kind of like I, like I said with my uh, introduction earlier, uh, that week that I sat Devin's course, uh, back in 2002, I happened to have off that week. And if I didn't have off that week, who knows if I would even be doing Wi-Fi these days. I might be doing SQL or still be doing networking. Um, it just, you know, it just happened. And that's the same way with the book. Coleman just happened to get an email. We just, I, we just happened to be the guys who wrote it. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you guys for joining us on the show. Thank you for uh, giving away two copies to our listeners and so if you want to enter into that giveaway unfortunately we can only open that to us folks head over to the show notes clear and you there's a form you could fill out and when mr coleman and mr westcott aren't writing a book you can probably follow them on twitter you can follow coleman at mr multipath and you can follow westcott at david westcott and we'll add a link to their twitter accounts too so, guys, thank you guys for, for joining us. Thank you for writing such phenomenal books. I look forward to reading it and getting some refresher on the CWNA content and, and Wi-Fi content in general. But, yeah, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.